This is going to be a quick and easy tutorial on how to make this sort of flow field feedback effect using tops. This is one of the first effects that I stumbled upon in Touch Designer that really hooked me on the potential of using feedback to create generative systems. And as someone who'd used generative art tools before, like processing in P5.js, flow fields were an aesthetic I was really into and keen to recreate in this tool. Now the effect on the right hand side of the screen is what we're going to be looking at creating today. And I'm just gonna turn that off. This is here in case we need it and I forget, but um, we're gonna start building this network from scratch. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a circle top. I'm also gonna create a null and have that as the end of my chain and visualize that. So this is basically the end visual I can see in my right hand side. I'm gonna bring up my parameters window and change my resolution to, let's do um, 124 by 124. So we can see that's a much higher resolution now. And I'm also going to go into the radius of the circle and I'm gonna move it down to something like 0.08. Maybe I'll go smaller later. So the goal that I have here is basically to create a grid of circles using only tops. And we can use transform to do this super easily. So I'm gonna bring in a transform. I'm gonna to go to the tile tab, that's the second tab. And I'm gonna click repeat from the drop down menu for extend. I'm then gonna to go to the scale parameter and hold down alt shift and right click so I can start dragging. I'm gonna keep dragging here, keep going. And we can see that as I drag down and down, we're creating a grid out of the repetition of that point. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go in here and just turn up that radius a little bit. Okay, liking that. So basically what the goal is here is to apply displace and feedback to manipulate these points. I'm gonna add in an RGB key at the end of the chain so we can see a black background. And I'm gonna now add in a feedback. I'm gonna add in a displace and I'm gonna add in a null, which we'll call end FB. And I'm gonna drag this end FB onto the feedback top and stretch out there. Obviously we're not displacing by any parameter at the moment, so let's create a noise. And before I plug that in, although I guess it's automatically plugged in, I'm gonna tweak some of the values on my displace. I wanna turn down the displace weight to 0.001, something really small. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a keyboard in chop that's gonna allow me to pulse my feedback on the one key press. So now we have something that is distorting, but not in the way that we want. I'm going to change the axis from monochrome to RGB. So we can see there's a difference here when I'm using red, green, blue versus just the red channel. And we can see that it's distorting in a way that we're used to in sort of reaction diffusion feedback setups. Now, what I actually want to do is I want to bring back a little bit of the original signal into my network. So I wanna bring back some of these starting points into the network so I have a sort of a mix between the original position and the displaced version. So I'm gonna create a cross. I'm gonna plug in the top inlet to the displace and I'm gonna connect my transform to the bottom inlet. So now we can see that over here we're fully displacing and over here we're fully viewing the original position. So I wanna find a value that sort of works for me. That's pretty good. So we'll go down a little bit. And 
obviously right now we can see that that kind of finds an equilibrium where it kind of just forms into its own static image. So to animate it across a larger scale of time, we're going to go into our noise. We're going to go to the transform tab, translate Z, apps time dot seconds. And we'll do times 0.1 to slow it down a little bit. So now we can see we have this sort of flow field movement that is being managed by the noise. If I turn up that amplitude, we'll see that increase or decrease. And one final little sort of trick before we get into more post-production stuff that I like to do is I like to go to image filters and bring in a sharpen. I'm not going to add this within the feedback loop. I'm going to connect my end FB and plug it into my RGB key. And this is sort of a post-processing sort of effect that allows me to get a bit more detail and definition. If we go into the displace and change the displace weight, we will get a system that's much more active as we're displacing more every frame. To even that out, we can play with the cross parameter. The higher we move it towards one, the closer it will be to its original position. And the closer to zero, the more distorted it will be. So let's find something about here. Likewise, playing with our noise will allow us to manipulate this flow field in different ways. In this slight modification, I have added in a second sharpen. We can see that this sharpen's maxed out. So if I add in a second sharpen and chain them together, we can kind of play with these values to get something that's a little more present. Another little hack I like to use is to plug my noise into a circle top. So something like this, circle. And let's delete that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my output from composite and set resolution. I'll keep that the same. I want my operation to be multiply. And I'm going to take my noise two values here, which I'm using to control the position and drag those to my center values. So I'm now moving my circle around. I'm also gonna scale down that radius a little bit. Now, if I maneuver this into my displace rather than the full noise, we get a circle that moves around. What I'm also gonna do is tweak the softness. So we have a softer edge. You can see here that it goes from being very hard to very soft. So we can kind of play with that to get an effect that you like. And the final thing that I will do is I'm gonna add in a constant. We can see here that I've got a constant from earlier. I'll delete that. Right click, insert constant. By default, it's gonna just keep the same. So what I want to do is I want to set in my output over and swap operation. So now my operation is going to just layer that circle over a matte background. And what I want to do is tweak the color a little bit. We can see that currently these particles here have a sort of a horizontal trail. And by tweaking it to different colors, we can alter how these um, pixels are manipulated. So you could try different colors within your color scheme to get different effects. Red is going to be horizontal, while blue is going to be closer to a sort of a vertical position. But I'm just going to go for this gray that sort of adds a little circle around it. And this is a effect I really like because now we're kind of moving around in our network and creating this sort of um, manipulated flow field effect. You could also go ahead and do something where you're manipulating it with a video feed. So if I put in a video device in, 
I could displace with whatever's coming in from the camera. So you can play around with lots of different types of displacement. So this is a fun little network that there's lots and lots of potential with. I'm going to leave this with you. I hope you have fun with it and I look forward to seeing you next time.